In our next lesson on stoichiometry, we're going to learn how to apply the ratios that we learned about in the last lesson to perform calculations involving moles to moles of one substance to another in a chemical equation. The mole to mole calculations are very important because these calculations are central to all stoichiometry problems. In these problems, we're going to start in units of moles of one substance. We're going to call that the given, and we're going to denote that often by a capital G for given, for one substance in a chemical equation, and we're going to end in units of moles of another substance, that other substance we're going to call the wanted, or W, in the same chemical equation. Substances can be any combination of reactants and products, so reactant compared to reactant, reactant compared to product, product compared to reactant, or two products compared to each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this ratio of the moles. So it's going to be a ratio of the moles of the wanted substance to the moles of the given substance from the balanced chemical equation. And that's going to go into our familiar conversion factors from our dimensional analysis problems. The process is going to be very straightforward. For these calculations, it's going to be a one-step calculation using dimensional analysis. First thing we need to do is identify the given quantity and the wanted quantity in the problem. It'll be a word problem, so it'll be very easy to see. Next, we're going to select the mole ratio with the ratio of coefficients of the wanted and the given from the balanced chemical equation. Finally, we're going to multiply the given quantity by that ratio to get the wanted quantity. Let's use the Haber reaction as the first example for looking at calculations of one mole to another. In the Haber reaction, a very important reaction commercially in which ammonia is made from nitrogen and hydrogen, something we've seen before, we're going to ask you to determine the number of moles of ammonia gas produced, that's going to be our wanted, by reacting 12 moles of hydrogen gas, and that's going to be our given in the reaction. So here we've identified the wanted and the given, and we're going to react it with sufficient N2. Don't worry about that. All that that means is that it's going to be more than enough N2 to react, and we can ignore it. We'll come back and see what we do with the N2 if we have, if we don't have a sufficient amount later on in limiting and excess reactants. So, let's take a look at what we have here. We've identified our given. The given is those 12 moles of hydrogen, as we identified up here. The wanted, we don't know how many moles of ammonia. That's going to be our question mark. So, let's get going. To connect the wanted to the given, what we're going to do is look at the mole ratio. The mole ratio that's going to be important to us here is going to be the ratio in which the moles of the hydrogen are going to cancel. We're going to use the 3 from the balanced chemical equation to bring that down here. And for the wanted, we're going to look at the 2 moles of ammonia, and we're going to bring that down and put that on top. So we always are going to have our wanted over our given using the balanced chemical equation, the coefficients in that balanced chemical equation. Now, let's see how this is going to work for calculation. The calculation, as with all of our calculations, we're going to, well, I've got the moles of, of ammonia here to show us that this is where we're going to end up. We're going to start with our given. We always start with our given in the, in the equations in the react uh, in the calculations we're going to multiply that now 
by the mole ratio. What happens here is that we're going to cancel the moles. So let's cancel our moles of hydrogen on the top, on the bottom. And now all that's left for us to do is to determine the answer. And 12 times 2 is 24, divided by 3 is 8. So you notice what we've always done is, as we always do with these, with these um, ratios in the, uh, the conversion factors in dimensional analysis, we're always going to cancel. We're going to cancel what we started with so that we end up with the units that we're looking for. And so the units that we're looking for are in the end. And the substance and units of the answer match what we wanted. Moles of ammonia, moles of ammonia, and we're done. Let's see if you can do it. So we have a new reaction for you. We have the reaction of phosphorus and oxygen to form P4O10. Here's the structure on the right. It's an interesting looking structure, something I would never ask you to draw. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to figure out how many moles of oxygen gas are required to completely react with 6.35 moles of phosphorus. So the video is going to pause now. I want you to figure out what the given from the equation is first. Okay, so you figured out what the given is. Let's see if we both agree. The given, here's 6.35 moles of phosphorus, so let's identify that as the given. 6.35 moles of phosphorus is going to be the start. Let's pause the video again, and you determine what the wanted is. All right, you've determined the wanted. Let's see if we agree. Let's switch colors. And the wanted is the number of moles of oxygen. You notice we're now looking at both a product a reactant to a reactant rather than a reactant to a product. Let's write down the wanted is the number of moles of oxygen. Finally, let's pause again and have you determine what the mole ratio is before we put together the calculation. Okay, so we're back, and you've determined what the mole ratio is. Let's take a look here to make sure we see it. Since we are going to, uh, well, any mole ratio is going to start with our wanted to our given in the balanced chemical equation. Now, since we want to cancel out the moles of phosphorus here from the given, we're going to take the moles of phosphorus, and that's going to come down to our mole ratio. Bring that down. And we're going to put that in the denominator to cancel it out. Did you get that? All right. Next, our wanted is our moles of oxygen. So we have five moles of oxygen in the balanced chemical equation. Bring that down to our wanted. And we're going to put that in there. And we're going to get 5 moles of oxygen over 4 moles of phosphorus as our wanted to our given. Finally, let's put together the calculation. We'll pause the video for a moment, and you can try it yourself. All right, so the calculation. We're going to start with 6.35 moles of phosphorus. We're going to do this railroad track method now. So we took our given. And we started off the railroad tracks with our given. Next, we put our mole ratio. So here's the mole ratio. We take that 5 moles of oxygen over the 4 moles of phosphorus. The moles of phosphorus are going to cancel, leaving us with moles of oxygen. And all that's left for you to do is the math. And so your final answer 7.94 moles of oxygen. You ready for one more? I thought you were. Let's go for one more problem. In this next problem, we're going to make you balance the equation. So here's the reaction between methane gas and sulfur. 
to make carbon disulfide and hydrogen dihydrogen sulfide. First thing you have to do is balance the equation. So let's pause the video and have you balance that equation. It's a little bit of a tough one, but I'll help you out afterwards. All right, so you should have come up with the following coefficients. You start off with the carbon disulfide and the methane, and that finally gives you a 4H2S, and you're all set. Now, the question is going to be, how many moles of CS2 are produced when 3.49 moles of S8 is used? So, rather than have you go through the process of identifying the given and the wanted, as we've done before, let's see if we can do this as a straight shot, straight across, to find out what the answer is. I'll pause it again, figure out the calculation. All right, so you've done your calculation. So, did you identify the 3.49 moles of sulfur as your given? I hope you did. So let's start off with the 3.49 moles of S8. The ratio. Well, the ratio is going to involve the coefficient on the sulfur. Remember, there's an implied one here that goes in the denominator. That's our, that's our given in the balanced chemical equation. Our wanted is CS2. That's a 2. Let's make that a W. And so we're going to take the ratio is going to be 2 moles of CS2 over 1 mole of S8. Let's cancel out our moles of S8. Do our multiplication, and we get 6.98 moles of CS2. Continuing along, let's do one more equation, one more re uh, calculation here. How many moles of H2S are also produced? Now, when I say this, also produced, that means we're going to refer back to the same 3.49 moles of S8 that we had before. So let's see how this works. Pause the video and see if you can do this now using the first calculation as a guide. And we're back. So now they're going to start off. We're going to start off with that same 3.49 moles of S8. But now what we're aiming for is the moles of CS2. This is going to be our wanted rather than the moles of CS2 that we had before. We're going to use the railroad tracks method again this time. Now we have the same wanted, the same, I'm sorry, I said the same given. The same given is this S8, so we're going to have a 1 as our denominator. But now the wanted is the 4 moles of H2S. So bring that 4 moles down. So notice the 1 mole of S8 comes down here. The 4 moles of the H2S come down here. We're going to cancel the S8 again. And our answer is now 14.0 moles of H2S. All right. So you have the worksheet. There's no book, work, uh, no book reading to do this time. Finish out the worksheet, and I'll see you in class.